Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 58. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 6. XLSM, XLSM, click on the link below the video. Hey, this is what we did last video. We calculated, so we had, based on past data, estimate the percentage of scores on the next statistics test that will be 10 points or less. So we had our X our mean, our sigma, we calculated the probability, 0.1586. We also calculated the probability of getting above 10. And this chart helped us visualize. Last time we saw the functions, in this video we want to see how to create this chart. So I'm going to click on the sheet less than or equal to chart. Here's our data, we, uh, our, our, our functions that we created last time, and there's our x, R12 and R2, but I want to come in and zoom over in over here and see if we can't create a cool chart. Alt W G, zoom in on selection. Alright, so there's our sigma 2, standard deviation, and there's our mu. Now the, the trick is we saw back with binome dist 0 to 7, right? And we, we listed our x's and then we calculated our probabilities and then plotted it on a column chart. Well here we're going to do an area chart, but we have a slight problem. Well, what x's are we going to use, right? Well, if we use our empirical rule, 99% of the values are plus or minus 3 standard deviations. Well, we know our mean and standard deviation, so we can just subtract three standard deviations from the 12 and add three, and that'll give us a nice range. But I'm going to be safe. Instead of three, I'm going to go six. So our low x, our starting value, I'll say, hey, here's our mean minus the standard deviation. Well, how many standard deviations? Times six equals 12. And then on the upper end, we'll plus, plus the standard deviation. How many? Times six. All right, so 0 to 24. Now, we have to list them. Well, we can't go 0, 1, 2, right, because these aren't discrete values. And if we did, the chart would look kind of chunky. So I'm going to delete these values. Well, we are going to start at 0, but we're going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. And that'll give us a nice smooth chart. Now, I don't want to type all these out to 24, so I'll show you a great trick. We saw this trick earlier. Here's your cursor. You select the cell and you move your cursor right to the fill handle. When you see your crosshair, right click and hold and drag down and drag back. When you let go, then you see this um, drop down. You can point to series. Again, it's right click, drag down, drag up, and point to series. We want to fill the column. The step value is going to be 0.1 and the last value is 24. Click OK. That's amazing, control down arrow. 260, control up arrow. Now we can calculate our probabilities. I'm going to put a little label here, P of X. Now we can use the norm dot dist function. We're going to, same as last video, use it with our X mean and standard deviation, except for use cumulative 0, which gives us the height of the chart. All right, our X is going to be that comma, our mean, F4 to lock it, comma, our standard deviation, F4 to lock it, comma, and zero. Now, probability mass function, in the textbook they call it density. Mass and density are synonyms in this context. But this zero doesn't give us the probability of exactly zero, but the height. Now I'm going to enter that and double click this fill handle and automatically it's sent down. It's sent all the way down until it sees a blank and it stops. It in essence stops on the last value there. Those are all the heights of the curve. And now when we plot these, um, because we have lots of uh, small increment numbers, we'll get a nice smooth curve. Now I'm going to click in that cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. And Area Charts, Insert, Area, and we're going to use this one right here. Now it places it down at the bottom here. We don't want that. So I want to cut it. Either right click cut or click on the edge and control X. I'm going to maybe click in cell, or that cell and control V or paste. Hey, that's looking pretty good there. Uh, so we have a little uh, area chart. 
Now, this needs to be fixed right here, just like with the binome disk. So you go to Design, Select, Edit, and click on the top one, Control Shift Down Arrow, and click OK. Click OK. Okay, so there we have our X's. And if we expand the width, we should be able to see a 12 right at the peak. That's where our mean is. All right, now we don't need those lines. We can delete those. But now we want to add an extra data set, just like we did with binom disk. And so it shows visually here. So I'm going to scoot this over to the side. And this one, I'm going to say P of x less than or equal to 10, I think is what we have. At the end of the video, we'll come back and actually yeah, it's a less than or equal to 10. That's our probability. At the end of the video, I'll come back and show you a fancy way to do those labels uh, so they'll update. But let's worry about adding, creating this extra column here. Now, what do we want? As we copy this, or what do I want on the chart? Well, here's all of our x's, right? And really, we don't want the x's. We want, when we get to 10 here, we want all of these probabilities equal to or less than 10 and none of these. And we need the whole column, including all these blanks down here and all of the probabilities up here on that chart, just like we did with binome dist. So we're going to use the if function. In essence, what we're going to do is we're going to say in this cell, we're going to say if this value is less than or equal to the 10 up there, then please put the probability. And then we go down here. If that cell is less than or equal to the 10 up there, then put the probability. And again, when we get past 10, we don't want it to uh, show the probability. So we're going to use the if function. If function is perfect for this. It's designed specifically to put one of two things in a cell. Remember, we want the probability or blank. The logical test is going to be, hey, the particular x, two columns, relative cell reference to my left, Anytime that's less than or equal to, and I'm going to go up and get my x. It's in C4, and I'm going to hit the F4 key. The F4 key locks it, because we need it locked as we go down. Every one of these needs to be looking there. Now, this comes out true or false. If it's true, we want the probability, relative cell reference. If it's false, we have to put type the syntax for nothing or blank. Or it's technically a null, nothing text string. Because remember, we put um, double quotes, all text in double quotes. So we'll close that off. Control Enter. And now I can double click and send this down. And just like with the binome disk, when we get past our hurdle, oh, that is so cool. Look at that. And then nothing. There's that formula. If we change the x up here to 9. We could see our amazing column here. Look at that. It changes immediately. Now I'm going to Control Z. It jumps up there and changes the 10. Now we need to plot it. Actually, I have my label right here. I'm going to click on the chart title. Click. Click up here. Equal sign. And then I'm going to click in. F17. And so then we have our chart label there. Right click, uh, mini toolbar, and then 12. OK, now we have our values here. Let's add this column here. I'm going to go up to Design, Select Data, and there it is. Add. This is the real power of charting. Add the series name. There it is. Series values. And this gets tricky. You have to highlight that and be sure and delete it. Click on the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow. Click OK. Click OK. Now, if you saw there for a moment, the values we just added had the incorrect x's, but the first column trumps that unless you add it as a secondary axis, which we're We'll do that at the end of the video, but right now it's perfect. Meaning the values that we added for this 
are, are, are already there, so they're showing. That is so cool. Let's try this. This is like magic. And we have, uh, I want to change this and see if this works. So 14. Now that's totally beautiful. Look at that area changes. Notice that doesn't change. I actually want to fix that right here. I want to create a, let me zoom in here. I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to create a, we did this back in the binome, just a label and equal sign, it's going to be some text and some stuff from the cell. So I'm going to say equals, double quote, P, open parentheses, X less than or equal to, and now I need my 10 there, so I'm N double quote and join it. I think it was C, C4. You can actually type those in if you want. C4. And then finally an ampersand, double quote, close parentheses. So all we did is we joined that to the cell reference and then this on the other side. So three things, two ampersands. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this. Copy, escape, delete, edit mode, control V and change this to greater than. Oh, that is so cool. So let's see our chart in action here. If I change it to 15, let's change it to 8. And so there it's visually portraying the probabilities. Now for this class, that's uh, as much as you need to do. I'm going to show you some um, advanced tricks here if you want to watch this, you can or uh, not. I want to actually create labels here that will show the probabilities and I want to add a secondary axis that shows not only the X but the Z values and this gets pretty tricky I actually do have labels um, in chart steps for this cool chart here uh, nothing that will be on the test but if you're interested here it is now the first thing is I would like to change these labels a little bit further. I want to add to these text labels the actual probabilities. Oh, and we already have those, right? This we calculated last video with our norm.dist, one for cumulative, meaning from the low end all the way to our x that we threw in, and here in this case it's 8. And then here this is just 1 minus. So no problem. Let me zoom in here. I wonder if I could go like. Uh, Hey, that's pretty big. Okay, now the trick here is I'm going to click there and type space equals that. All I need to do is join. So now I've added an equal sign. I'm going to use the join symbol, ampersand, and click on the, this is the greater than or equal to, so it needs to be this one. Now immediately we're going to see a problem. You can quarter, sort of see it here. What's true about formulas? They don't look at formatting. We've seen this before in this class. Even though it looks like this is 0.977, no way. That's a probability with probably up to 15 digits there. And this, since this is a formula, a text formula, right? That's a text formula. And it's looking at a cell reference and it's not seeing the formatting. No problem. We can round it. We'll use the round function. So I'm using round, it takes a number, and all I need to do is type a comma and tell it how many digits. I'm going to say 4. And that's it. That's how we fix that and add that. So now we have that. Let's do it also for this. Come to the end equals, I'm sorry, inside the double quote space equal space. And I'm going to join shift 7 round. Here's the lower end, comma 4. And it doesn't matter if they're not showing here, that is just totally amazing. Look at that. So now I can change this to 10. And in essence I could uh, do anything above and below a particular x, right? Uh, 14. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is add, and let's come over here. This is going to get a little tricky again. I have steps. There's a quicker way to, okay, Alt W G. All right, I want to um, calculate my Z, that's no problem. In parentheses, particular X minus our mu, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key, divided by our standard deviation. Locked with the F4 key. Of course, that's going to be negative 6, because we determined that up here, plus or minus 6 standard deviations. I'm going to double click and send this down. Now. This is, there's a bunch of steps here. We can't just go up to design, select, because right now, if I change any one of these, it will always, I can't add two different axes the way it's set up here. I didn't say that right. We just can't do it until we tell this to go to the secondary axis. No problem. We select this. That's opposed to the blue ones where you can see everything, but you click on that and then right click format or control one and there it is you have to send it to the secondary axis before you can start adding extra axes i'm going to click close now i do want two x uh, axes but i don't want two y so i'm going to click on this and delete all right now i'm going to go up to layout axes there's the primary horizontal axis it's showing left to right now I want secondary horizontal and I want to show left to right now it's going to appear at the top no problem oh well first off let's move it to the bottom and then we need to link it to our X's R right click format or control one and it's totally buried down here axis options axis labels low now, I have it in the notes over here, but there it is, down here. There it is. And that is totally amazing. We have our X and Z. Now, we need to link this, and then we need to add a label. So I'm going to go up to Design, Select. And without adding it as a secondary axis, we couldn't have done this trick. Now, when we click here and edit it, it's allowed to have a completely different uh, set of numbers. So I'm going to click there, control shift down arrow, click OK. There they are, and you see when you click here, you can see they're different. Click OK. All right, so everything's looking pretty good. One last thing, we need to go to layout and text box, because there's, I don't know of a way of to do this automatically. I want inside of here, the top one is X, enter, enter Z change the size a little bit. With it still selected, I'm going to control one and out to add an outside border. So now we have our X and Z. So now let's check this out. Ten. Whoops. So 10, and then there we have it. We have our uh, Z's and X's, and there's our probability changing. That is pretty awesome. All right, the extra fancy stuff isn't required for the class, but uh, you know it's it's fun to do. And uh, with with one X input, you know you can change it, and the probabilities are popping out here. You're having a visual portrayal, kind of nice. I almost forgot one last thing on this video. When we did binome dist and we were given a value like 14, we could simply go to the probabilities and add those columns up. You're not allowed to do that because the when you use this norm.disk with the zero, it's calculating the height. So I want to show you. In last video, we did norm.dist with one, and no problem. We can calculate the probability less than or equal to whatever our x is. That's 0.84. But let's just add these up, alt equals. And I'm going to click down here all the way down to 14. So you're not allowed to do this. We did this with our discrete probability distribution because height of the column and was height of the column and the probability here, that's not the case. We know because the probability, um, the 
density function, the mass function, does not calculate probability. So we know that th that's not allowed from that. And we also could see that's a ridiculous. That's not a probability, because probabilities are only 0 to 1. So that's just try trying to link what we did with a discrete probability distribution. And the height here, just link that we could do it there, but we can't do it here. All right, that was a lot of fun stuff. Uh, next video, we'll uh, do some probability on the upper end. All right, see you next video.